Hello and welcome to a new series of videos about electrical engineering. Today we are going to talk about rotary current it is called. Uh, so rotary or something is rotating or what? The current is rotating. How does it work? Uh, well we talked about AC, uh, alternating current. And uh, well rotary current is very similar to AC but a little bit more complex. Uh, this is why I want to start with you with a thing we already know and we already know an AC circuit. So I'm going to draw one AC circuit right now. So here's an AC voltage source. Here is a line. The line has a certain resistance, has a certain inductance. Then there's somewhere a power plug. Then we have a burden. That's it. Yeah. This is an AC circuit. So we have here a AC voltage U1, yeah, alternating current voltage, and we have an alternating current I1. Yeah. And I'm going to draw this in here now, yeah, pointer diagram. So let's make it 3.5 cm. Yeah. Here we have U1 and we have a certain I1, and I will draw it like that. Yeah, and say, okay, here is I1. And in between, depending on the burden here, how much phase shift and so on, we have a phase angle phi1. Mm -hmm. One. And now I'm going to talk about the public uh, power supply. Uh, because actually, it can be Theoretically, there can be more than what I draw, yeah? but usually we have not only one AC system, we have three AC systems. These AC systems are called phases, yeah? and this is why the more common name for this in English is three-phase AC. So we have a second AC system. Second burden, second line, second voltage, second alternating current. And the thing is that, that the second voltage is, uh, has a phase shift of 120 degrees. So if I draw in here now, 120 degrees around and also, but it has the same length. Oh, it's not blue. This one. Here we have our U2, all right? 120 degree phase shift in between, all right? And we have, of course, a second current, which can be a little bit different, but probably it's similar. Yeah? Here we have I2, yeah? here we have a phase V2, all right? And since it's called three-phase AC, we have a third AC system. Yeah. Power plug, third burden, whatever this is, third voltage source, yeah. third line, resistance, inductance. So we have here a U3 and an I3. And, well, it's again 120 degree phase shift, 120, I like that. And also the same length, they all have the same voltage, U3, and we would also have some I3, which can also be usually a little bit different, yeah? I3. Here we have a V3, and here again we have 120 degree. <laughs> that's it. Oh, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Three phase AC. This is how this is working. But we make simplifications yeah? because look at that. Here we have I1. And here we have I2, and then I add I3 
do E again. They are compensating each other pretty nicely. Yeah? Not exactly, depending on the burdens, yeah? how much burden there is, how big the currents are, how much phase shift there are, but they are compensating each other because of this phase shift of 120 degrees. All right? So this means those lines here, didn't, that don't need three lines. I don't need three lines. So I just make one. Yeah? I make one. So I again will draw this here. My first AC system. Right? Then I'm using the same line here as base for my second AC system. Also my second burden. I put here and connect this here. So here I have my U1, here I have my U2, here I have a I1, here I have a I2. Right? And three phase AC, so I make a third phase. I add a third phase. Here we have our U3. Nice! And here there's a current running, usually called IN. Yeah, why is it called IN? Uh, because this thing here is called neutral line. Usually there's no voltage. All voltages are pointing to the neutral line. Right? So I have between a phase and the neutral line, I have the so-called phase voltage, right? So there's the so-called phase voltage and this neutral uh, current is usually not significantly bigger than the other currents, so it can be the same diameter of, of, of wire because they are compensating each other. If there is a symmetrical load, so every burden is the same, yeah, then the neutral current would be zero and then I could ask myself, why put the wire? Yeah? And this is done. Yeah? Just skip the wire. Yeah? But then there is no neutral. If there is a, a symmetrical burden, no issue, no wire. Yeah? We will talk about it, what will happen if the symmetrical burden is not that symmetrical and we have no wire, but this will come. Yeah? This thing here, where all the currents meet and build this neutral uh, current is called star point or also neutral point, star point, star point test, not star point, star point. <laughs> <clears throat> so that's it. That's three the AC. Yeah. And then, okay. Three AC systems. Where's the advantage? Huh? Well, I never said, and I never implied that I have to put my burns like this. Yeah? I'm free to put in a burn like that between two faces, okay? I put a burden between two faces. So what voltage will this burden experience? Yeah? This uh, burden will experience the difference between U1 and U2. So U1 minus U2. Let's have a look what this means. What, how big is this voltage? So I'm going to draw in here now minus U2. This is going down here. Here, this is minus U2, and then I will add U1 to it. Here's U1, and here the sum of both. Yeah, the sum of both. Here we have then this U12. This is much bigger. <laughs> hey, cool! So I have a bigger voltage. I have three AC systems yeah, with a phase voltage. Here in Austria, we use 230 volt phase voltage. Yeah? And but how big is this? Yeah? If I'm now plugging into one line and the other phase, so between two phases, this voltage 
This is called line voltage. Yeah? If I'm between two lines, I'm, I have the line voltage. Yeah? Uh, so I can, I can get more power out of it. Yeah? Cool. Yeah. Let's see how big this is. Yeah? If I make it now like that, make it 90 degree, then we have A, B and C. Yeah? Rectangular triangle, we know all Pythagoras, a squared plus b squared is c squared. Yeah? And we have here an angle of 30 degree. Yeah? So b equals c multiplied by the sine of 30 degree. And the sine of 30 degree is exactly half, so this is c half. If I put this in here, I could write a squared plus c squared quarter is c squared. Now I bring the c to the other side, so I have a squared equals one full c and so it's three quarter c squared. What is And now I make the square root. Yeah, this is... And how long? How long is this? How big is x? Where is x? x is 2a, yeah? So this means 2 times square root of 3 half, c, zack zack, square root of 3, c. And that's the factor between the phase voltage and the line voltage, square root of 3. There's nothing mysterious behind this, it's just geometrical stuff. So my u, 1, 2 equals the square root of 3 u1. Yeah. By the way, this u1, 2 I can also find here. Yeah. Here in between those two, I just draw it dotted. Yeah. Because actually, of course, the pointer is starting in the middle. Yeah. But the length and the orientation of the pointer is here as well. Yeah. u1, 2. And here, for instance, I would have u2, 3. And here would have u3 one. I will not draw it in because it just would mess up my nice sketch. <laughs> All right. So this is three phase AC. Yeah. Here in Europe or in, in Austria at least, we are in Germany as well and so on. We are using 400 volt three phase AC system. What does it mean if there is only written 400 volt? It means 400 volt line voltage. Yeah? So 400 volt is the big voltage and the small voltage is then this factor square root of 3 smaller and this is approximately 230. So we have 230 in our power plugs and 400 volt Starkstrom. It's called yeah? power, power current, yeah? line voltage. That's it. Yeah? This is it. Yeah, so now we know how the pointer diagram looks like. Yeah. How this looks like in sign and how you know, that we get a little bit more understanding. I will show you next time on the computer. On the computer we will have a look how the sine waves of our such three phase AC systems are looking like. Yeah. One hand so that we have a picture in mind. So this done. Thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.